Right, here it goes. Uh, three, two, one. Hello and welcome back to the Rob's Chat YouTube channel. We're back after a little break with obviously everything that's happened in the last week. And we're just here to discuss uh, Rovers' home time at Watford. So as you can see, I'm joined by Dom. How are we doing, Dom? Yeah, I'm good after the uh, manic week or so with um, transfer deadline day and all that. And then obviously what's happened at this weekend, it's sort of calmed our schedule down a tiny bit. I'm sure the congestion will ramp up uh, with the Wigan game at some point in the future. Um but yeah, it's good to be back. It's been a while. Yeah, it's a, obviously everyone knows the news that went on in midweek and, you know, our condolences go out with that. And I think football being back to right, so, you know, there's been a lot of discussion on Twitter about uh, the weekend's games being cancelled. You know, the authorities had the choice to cancel them. The actual football authorities, it wasn't a government oh. choice, it was a footballing choice. And regardless of that, we won't go into the politics of everything being cancelled and was it right, was it wrong or anything, we'll just, you know, we'll look at the match. So we'll start the preview where we obviously always, how we start it, and that's going back to the previous game. Obviously, 10 days ago, but from the day of the game to the last one we played, Bristol at home, a disappointing defeat, you know, a really disappointing day. What do you make of it, Dom? Uh, I think in particular the the first half was poor a bit like it it reminded me of the Stoke game but just with a few more goals to finish here. Um, the the their third goal was a a real sucker punch after our after coming back through the uh, Dolan goal, and it was uh, overall pretty poor to be honest with you. Um, I think we expected this in a few games with such a young squad, and um, it's easy to fall back on the tradition not tradition transition season excuse, but. It really felt like that in the last game. But you could say that Bristol City, you know, they've, they've, they're playing well this season and I think people are underestimating them. Yeah, I do think they'll, they'll have a decent season. And whether they'll there come the end of the season, we don't know. They might be, they might fall off. But from what I saw, they were, you know, a good side. And if you have a front four, a front yeah. three or four like they do, you've always a chance of doing something, haven't you? Because... You know, Conway, Wyman, even Naki Wells, you know, we all know his past connections, but even having someone like him, I think it's a good thing to have. So if you want to check out our reaction to that game, you know, head over to the YouTube channel. It's the last video we put up, so mm -hmm. you can tell we've been off for a bit. We've gone from a video a day to done in a week, but uh, mm -hmm. obviously there were bigger things at hand. So in terms of looking at team news, Dom, obviously we kind of got the brief before the Wigan game of, who could be involved, who couldn't, you know, we know Sammy Smodic is back, uh, Ayala's expected to be back. How big do you think having them to actually free is going to be for Rovers? Because it's been a bit, especially for Ayala, yeah. it feels forever, even though the season's only a month or so old. I mean, you could have said that four times in the last two years. Uh, at least you could say that, you know, every every other game we seem to th say that Ayala's back from an injury. Uh, but every time he comes back, he seems like he's not missed a game. Uh, I don't think he's ever really put a foot wrong when he's put in the team and shows his leadership from the back as and it's good it'd be good to see him and Hyam uh, in the same team because the two uh men essentially at the back with with the likes of Carter and uh Phillips as understudies essentially um Smodix is um I mean he need I think he's still he's yet to have a good game for us he's, he's had a good half an hour or so but he I don't think he's truly had shown his what he's worth so far but um it it's all about um, depth in the team and something that we've not had in the last two or three years, is it? So it's, it's good to have them back, as well as Wharton, who I think's sort of on the fringes of coming back, isn't it, as well? Yeah, with these injury ones, we're always wary of how we discuss them out because they can say a player's available and then he doesn't make the squad or they can say he might not be in and then suddenly he starts. So it's always hard to, to kind of call where the team news is. Obviously, Watford, the visitors to Ewood, we always have a look at them. We won't have an opposition preview in this one, just with the nature of everything and planning and getting things back up to the speed we were at almost before everything stopped. We won't have a preview, but we will look at Watford. Now, one thing, Dom, that you hinted out before recording, which I hadn't yeah. realised, was just the number of signings and number of outgoings Watford have had. For anyone who doesn't know, I mean, I'll just lift list off some of the names that went. Kuko Hernandez, Zinconago, Rob Elliott, Ben Foster, Andre Gray, Josh King, uh, Kuka, 
Nicholas and Kulu, Musa Soko, Adam Messina, Kiko Firmino, Ponte Stolberg, Emmanuel Dennis, Kamara, Danny Rose, you name so many. Even on loan, you know, Ashley Fletcher's gone out on loan. Uh, Domingos Queen has gone out. Quarto Bar, there's so many. And, you know, they have made some good signings, but obviously with a new manager and that, everything just so hard to predict, especially a club like Watford, who are yeah. known for loaning players mm-hmm. out, loaning players in and all that stuff. And, you know, when I mentioned... Was it, I think it was Kamara that was... I know I mentioned Kamara. I think he was the one that... They went. All the scandal went on about the money, didn't it? So that's another one completely as well. But, I mean, King Davis come in. You know, we know how good he was. He destroyed Rovers last year when Forrest come to leave. Yes. Courtney House at Villa has been a good centre-back for a few years, especially at this level. Hamza Chowdhury. You know, Bio started well. The striker who come in from Belgium. Mario Gaspar from Villarreal. So you look at you know, all the change and obviously when Prem Clubs come down, we kind of expect these moves, don't we? We expect them to leave. We know what for the like, we know that if they go back up this year, they'll sign a lot of players in the Prem and then if they come back down, they'll get rid of them again and that's just the nature of how they do things and whether it's right or wrong is a different thing. But what do you make of Watford? Because you look at the record, um, you know, another thing I didn't know before I looked into this, a place above Rovers, three wins and one loss at home, but away from home, they've drew every single game, they've played four, drew four, you know, they've drawn at West Brom, drawn at Birmingham, drawn at Preston, but everyone drew at Preston, and they drew at Rotherham, so four draws, yet to win, yet to lose on the road, what do you make of Watford under Rob Edwards? I mean, it, it almost makes the prediction later easy to predict, I think, of what's going to happen later. I think the, the fact that they let 50 go sort of screams the... Um, with all the managers that are coming in and out every single season, they all have a different idea and they'll all bring in players that they want. And then this is this is the sort of bottleneck, um, um, you know, out of, of, of the 50 players that are, are left the club. And it's not an exaggeration, like you just said. I just sat there and chilled out while you named all the players. And that was only the better ones. You know, you could if you named them all, we would, we would be here till about half nine at night. Um, Drawing four games away from home is never a bad thing, isn't it? Especially for a team that's gone down and a team that's clearly clearly um, changed the squad a lot, a lot more than Rovers have. And we've we've signed a lot of players as well. So um, if you're not going to lose away from home, you might you're going to try and draw. And uh, I, I hope that when I watched uh, Watford play Burnley, they didn't have much of the ball, and yet they still they still won the game one 0 at home. I sort of hope that they have the ball because I feel like we're better when we're not on the ball, yeah. essentially. Look at the Bristol City game, look at the Stoke game, 60% possession in both games and we almost don't know what to do with it. It's, it was, it's reminiscent of the, the Mowbray team of a couple of seasons ago with uh, Harvey Elliott where we, we had more possession but just nothing, we did nothing with it and I think that's most championship teams. So hopefully we'll almost act as a an away team um, at, at home and... Watford did draw against Rotherham one one last game, and they're not pulling up any trees this season. They're a lot better than they used to be, but the sort of I feel like no team in the Championship this season is gonna go up and you know like Newcastle's and Brighton's of the past and Wolves and I, I can't even remember who it was last season who finished up, uh, Fulham. You know, like you go away from home, and you, you're you have them at home, and you just know that you're just hoping for like a draw at best, but um, it. With a three-five-two formation as well, the same against Bristol City. You're hoping that we've sort of learned from the the past, essentially. And uh, in the last ten days, uh, John Dahl's given him a bit of a a talk about how he's actually defended a three-five-two rather than <laughs> what we did against them. So I'm I'm quietly confident, but um, obviously Watford are a, a Premier League team, like I said last season. So they're, they're going to obviously, hopefully, have more of the ball, like I said. I think one of the things you know with uh, with Watford especially was that you know even if they're bad they've got his male side they've got Joe Pedro who mm. can just pull a goal look at Sarge's goal against West Brom mm. out of nowhere and and then he misses his penalty later on and but that's your thing that's the thing I'm always wary of you play these big clubs and Rovers can dominate the game and well any team can dominate against them for eight minutes and when you've got a player that good doesn't matter look at Rovers with Jordan Rhodes you know it could be poor old game. But, you know, if Jordan Rhodes gets one chance, he put the ball in the net. And that's kind of where we're at with Pedro and Sar. So, 
that's it. I think we'll enjoy it. I think we'll get a lot of chances, actually, this game. But we know that Watford only one or two and they could beat us one or two nil. So that's our thing to be wary of. In terms of predicted 11s, you know, we'll move on to that. We'll look at who we think. I'll show that up on the screen now. So we've gone for a pretty similar team. So we've gone for Kaminsky in there, Carter right back, Hyam and Ayala centre-backs with Pickering at left back. Trev and Bucko in the midfield. We'll discuss that midfield. Hedges, Dyke, Burrett and Hurst. So obviously, Dom, the one that I think we're all going to pick out. The return to the midfield two of Trev and Bucko, I think we both spoke ourselves about actually missing that midfield duo and, you know, what they bring. Do you think Thomason's going to go back to it? Do you think we kind of need that? But I know Adam Wharton's been really good and the contract situation's looking good with him, which is always positive, but... Could you see us, you know, going back to that midfield too this game? You'd like to think so. Travis as a as a captain in the midfield rather than a right back seems more influential and and Buckley the one that we've 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 seen the last couple of seasons grow into this sort of man. Um you think that those two instead of Wharton and Morton would be the sort of choice because it hasn't worked the last couple of games. It did against Blackpool, but again it, it wasn't a great wasn't a great watch to be honest with you. But um you just give him a bit of a rest as well, like like we did with Phillips at the back. You can't you can't just throw these young players in all the time and expect the world from them every single game in terms of just confidence alone. Um, like I said, the contracts in on the way, which is a good sign as well for the future. With with Morton, I'm not sure if, if it's a case of he's got a certain amount of games to play, um, but he's he's definitely a championship quality. So if either of those four play, I'm not I'm not complaining, but we would like to see Travis and Buckley in the centre mids uh, because they're just the more influential there. Well, compared to the bench, obviously, but at right back as well, Travis looks a bit lost in the against uh, Bristol City. That's it, and you know, Trav only plays right back because we're missing plays. It's not a yeah. a tactical choice, is it? It's filling a hole, and you know, with Ayala back at centre back, we'll expect him to come straight to the side. So Hayden Cart is probably a right back now, which Thomason spoke about. You know, we know what he said about JRC probably not getting many minutes for the club now and regardless of your opinion on that I think that that's just the way we're going to go forward with it and it shows that Carter's going to be that second choice right back when it's possible so yeah. that's what we're expecting you know let us know in the comments who do you think will start obviously this is our predicted XI not what we maybe want to happen so just remember that when you put your comments in but let us know who do you want and who do you think we'll put in because it's two different questions really yeah yeah Dom, You've mentioned the predictions league before. It's yeah, time for your prediction. How am I doing on that? I don't even know what the league is. I'll flash it all up. It'll probably be a... I'll do it for the weekend's game. We'll do it for the weekend. So we're going to do it for Wigan and then everything went on and I decided yeah. to not... I haven't touched anything for three or four days in terms of the YouTube. So yeah. we'll put that on um, for uh, for Luton away on Saturday. But what's your prediction? You've referenced... Yeah, the predictions league. So I think I know what you're going to go for, but go yeah. on tell everyone. I wrote one one, and then you told me the facts about them drawing every game, and I was like, oh well, it makes it look like I've just sort of almost cheated the system. But I mean, if it's the result that Watford have had every single game apart from the nil nil against Preston, which is the most. I mean, when we play Preston next, I can't wait for my prediction in that game. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go with Hurst and Pedro as the two goal scorers. I'm gonna back us to win it personally. I'm, I can't, I can't back against us to lose, and I just feel like being at Ewood, these are the kind of games that I think we might just start getting that. I'm hoping we start getting a run, even with the uh, internationals coming up. Just two good results to end. I think if we get, if we stay unbeaten personally until the end of this week, I think this first bunch of the season has been a good start for us and. If we average what we've been doing all season, we'll be in a pretty good position come the end of the season. So I'll go for two one Rovers. I'll go Brereton Diaz and Hurst, and then it's between any of that front three. I'll go for Bayo. He seems to score all the time. I seem to be back in Pedro and Bayo will score. So I'll go for Bayo. But get your predictions in below. Like I say, we'll put the league on for Saturday's game at Luton. Uh don't worry, I've added everyone's points and that. It's just getting it all formatted. So Get that in, get your predictions in, get your scores in for both clubs. Let us know what you think will happen in the match. Are you looking forward? Are you going? You know, hopefully it's going to be one of them nights that you would that we enjoy rather than 
a cold, boring Tuesday night that we seem to have sometimes, but we'll see what happens. But thank you to everyone for tuning in. It's nice to be back. I think that's the, the big thing for me. It's nice to sit down after, yeah. well, sit down before a game for the first time in a while and just look ahead to a match and two games to go until the internationals. We'll have everything covered. We'll keep going through the international break as well. Do everything you need. You know, there'll be a bit of content. Just a little plug that Thursday Night Lives we started. So for anyone who doesn't follow on Twitter, Dom will be hosting. Each week we'll just have a question covered. So the, this week is going to be, what is your office 11? And you can jump in, get your opinions in. It's more of an interactive live show. So it's more you give your opinion and they'll be included as well. We're not going to completely yeah. write out any comments. We'll get them all included, get everything in. We'll build it. And then if you want to make a suggestion for a future show, future question, we've got, I think me and Dom sat down and got, we got 10, 20 covered that you can have. Yeah. So there's plenty of ones we can go through. We'll go through them each Thursday, unless something major is happening, like say England playing the World Cup or anything, then we'll change it. But yeah, every Thursday, come and join us. We'll be live. We'll do all of that stuff. But thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for joining us, Dom. Yeah, it's always good to be on. Like you say, it's it's good. It's good to have a little break, but it's always good to come back as well. And thanks to everyone for joining again. Hit like, hit subscribe, do all that stuff. We'll be back again soon. Hi, I'm Morton Gas Pedersen, and you're watching Rose Chat. Yeah.